the only event extreme enough to put our name to. The Unlimited Doozy. In the green foothills between Peter Maritzburg and Greytown in the province of KwaZulu-Natal lies one of the natural gems of the world, known all over the planet simply as the Valley of a Thousand Hills. Visitors travel to this corner of the country from every country on the planet to marvel at the natural scenery, to enjoy the local vibe, the hospitality and of course the rivers. The sun's yet to rise, but there's an air of intense excitement here at Camp Strift Canal in Peter Maritzburg as 1,564 paddlers prepare for the Unlimited Doozy Canoe Marathon. There are nine former winners in this stellar field, and all of them will be intensely aware of the pitfalls that await them downstream. They've got 45 kilometers to paddle on this first day to upstream Doozy Bridge. It's going to be a cracker. The last time that the Unlimited Doozy was contested as a K1 championship year was in 2011. Good medium level conditions for the first day drama for the men as boats get snarled amongst the top contenders in A batch, but the ladies race saw plenty of drama as Robin Keim took what has rapidly become a traditional swim at Ernie Pierce Weir. She was up against Abby AD. The minute day one hit the long portages, things started to settle out and the short-haired Andy Burke had quickly established himself as the man to beat. He had won in the K1 and now he had won a singles on the first day. He had to set up a margin with Anstott in what was going to be a titanic battle over the second stage. Anstott traditionally at his strongest on day two. Things not going 100% according to plan for Andy Burkett, but Robin Keim, super steady. Abby Aidy bouncing her way through the big water at Confluence and Washing Machine, but by the time the action got to Inanda Dam, it was still Anstott and Andy Burkett side by side. What was rapidly shaping up to be a grandstand finish to the 2011 year was very different in the ladies race as Robin Kime had the race totally in her control. Day three, on a medium to full level I'm gaining into Durban, Anstott and Andy Burkett. Were they going to roll the dice at Burma Road? Were they going to split options? They stayed side by side, a long portage around the hyacinth at Papua Sugalam and Andy Burkett out sprinted Anstott to claim the title. Robin Kime hardly put a paddle wrong and for her, it was a victory procession into the finish at Blue Lagoon. So after a wonderfully wet and rainy summer in KwaZulu-Natal that left all the rivers full and the dams overflowing, a huge field of 1,600 assembled at Camps Drift for the usual pre-race day briefing and everybody gearing up for the doozy vibe. Great, so this is our thir third year that we're involved with uh, the title sponsorship uh, of the Unlimited Doozy and it's, uh, it's worked out as a fantastic sponsorship for us. Our brand is, is about courage, it's about boldness, it's about pushing the boundaries and that's exactly what uh, the Unlimited Doozy is about. You know, every battle that's going out there is, is most certainly very courageous, very bold and most certainly pushing a lot of boundaries. So we like as a, as a business to connect with people. Uh, and We like to get involved and this year I'm proud to say that a whole lot of our staff uh, are participating in the in the race, very different to a normal sponsorship where you, where you get to take out a checkbook. We are taking out a checkbook and we are participating in the race and we're really looking forward to a, a massive, massive weekend. So, We're very fortunate Natal Canoe Club is a strong club in terms of its membership and its volunteer base and uh, they've really changed the face I think of organising canoe events in South Africa by adopting a very professional approach to it. We've spent in excess of 700,000 Rand on our clubhouse to bring it up to a world-class facility and we've got 800 volunteers out there that are going to be carrying forward the tradition of Doozy. So yeah, it's a monumental effort but we do have the team that's, that can pull it off and uh, we're very excited about the race. Amongst the celebs, Unati M. Sengana paddling with Oscar Chilupski. Uh, we're going to paddle down here and try and shoot Ernie Pierce Ware with Unati and make sure that she sort of gets over her nerves for tomorrow and the next days. Unati has won a lot of respect from the paddlers. She's done all her basic proficiency training. She's got her river proficiency and with very little water going over the weir, Oscar and Unati make it look deceptively easy. The crowd loving Unati being part of this great event. 
race day and a thick mist blanketing Peter Maritzburg, that's a telltale sign that it's going to be blisteringly hot for day one of the Unlimited Doozy Canoe Marathon 2013. All the big guns in attendance, one of the toughest fields in many years. Flowers being given to Sheila Pierce to wish the paddlers good luck for the race. One of those doozy traditions that's getting stronger year by year. What are you expecting today? I mean, there's a hell of a field here. What's going to be going on in the back? Um, yeah, it's quite difficult to predict what's going to happen, but I think um, it'll be a hard start. And then uh, I think everything's going to change at Campbell's um, and Pine Trees. The field will divide, and it'll make the race interesting. Everyone's talking it up as a real open race and some really good races here. What are you looking across the field? What do you think? Yes, for sure. I think it's going to be a really tough year. All the guys are looking very strong, so exciting racing. Do you feel pressure at all? Yeah, I do feel a bit of pressure, but I'm out there to enjoy it. So let's just do it. You see a glint of the racing. You, 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 get a, you get a bit of a thrill about this, don't you? 100 percent. It's an awesome, awesome uh, race to, to be part of it, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's such an incredible vibe, and uh, I'm sure the whole of uh, whole of Durban's up and uh, and listening and watching who's going to who's going to be leading this race. And a completely loaded A batch with four world champions and every paddler that's won this race since the new millennium on the start line to try and do it again in 2013. Day one is the tough one, loaded with five portages that really sort out the men from the boys. On the start line, waiting for the Carboneers Cannon and the 2013 Unlimited Doozy Canoe Marathon is underway as the paddlers sprint across a kilometre of flat water on Camps Drift. Everything to be gained by being at the front of this diamond because it constricts naturally into the only Pierce Weir, which is the first obstacle of the race. A huge diamond forming there, the man doing the pulling at the front, double world champion Hank McGregor. Andy Burkett right on his inside, Hank puts in a surge as he tries to get to the weir first. It looks like they're going to go down side by side, it's a narrow shoot, Marisburg College there in huge support and they are indeed going to take it on side by side. A handbrake turn, Hank has got the speed, both of them get to the bottom, Hank bounces left, Andy Burkett keeps his cool and calm composure about him and everybody piles through the start of a batch. Not much grace and decorum about this, they're all bundling over. It's more like a rugby scrum than a casual canoeing outing, but there's everything to be gained by getting onto the narrow umps and doozy first. Right across the road from Maritzburg College celebrating its 150th, plenty of hype and buzz around that as well. As the rest of the seeded paddlers is Jason Graham, a former K2 winner, bouncing down right into the traffic. It's like middle of town at rush hour. So McGregor and Burkett together as they went through the first weir, but just two or three kilometers down river is the witness weir. And look who's surfaced into the fray. Len Jenkins going like a man possessed, and he's jockeying for position to be first down the chute. Hank McGregor just on his outside, wisely leaving him some water. Len Jenkins slides down. It's pretty low and bumpy. It's a medium to low level doozy that they're going to have for most of the day. This is the released water from Henley Dam. But Len Jenkins making very quick work of the tight line down the rapid immediately below the witness weir. It's Jenkins, McGregor and then Burkett as the rest of A batch does everything possible to try and stick to them like Velcro. Now let's go back up to the start and plenty of buzz and anticipation as some very strong paddlers ready to contest the ladies race. Looking at the race, uh, where's the competition? Obviously the river is the major competition but, but uh, elsewhere? Um, yeah, there's a lot of strong ladies this year. Abby Aides, um looking like the biggest threat. Hilary Pitchford's always um, very consistent. She's always there to pick up the pieces if anything goes wrong. Um, and I think Jen Teron might be strong this year. She, she has a tendency to come in with a surprise every so often. So um, she hasn't been very strong in the DC before, but I think this year might be a different story. What <laughs> occupies your mind? Uh, the river, the, the conditions, the other paddlers? What, what's going through your mind? The river, I know, I'll handle quite fine. So it's mainly just competition, other paddlers. That's what we get nervous about these days. So yeah, just the tough competition. <laughs> All the top women stacked into sea batch and once again they get underway and the two kilometre sprint across the flat waters of Camp Drift is going to take them down to only Pierce Weir. Eerie scenes reminiscent of Macbeth as the thick mist that blankets Camp Drift almost conceals the top women as they head down towards Ernie Pierce Weir. But you can make out that it's Abby AD first down the chute, slides down there, so comfortable in this sort of water and into the thick grassy reedy channels. Good to get away here clean and also good to get away first. Good to enjoy the crowd cheering as well as the rest of the seated women in the batch slide through into their first taste. A good nerve settler as they get a good feel of the Amsendoozy that's going to be their home for the next day and a half. A couple of kilometers later the witness weir and huge support from the Epworth girls this time and a charge and here comes Brittany Peterson. 
good big roll of the dice from her as she's willing to mix it with the front runners like Abby Adi. And they go sliding down. Genteron just behind them. Great charge from Genteron. Sliding down the purpose built shoot. And then into that very tight channel here. If you don't get your lines right here, there are some real risks that can come back to visit you. Let's check out the rest of the women's batch as they come into the shoot. Hillary Pitchford seems to be in pole position, but a bit of a scramble to try and get onto this very narrow fish shoot. A little bit sideways, but it all seems to work out well in the end. Bouncing down into the water. Now the lines here are critical. You don't want to make a mistake here. Some very talented girls immediately behind them, but you can see that the lines and options are a little bit negated and you're having to make a plan B. Oh, and here's a plan B that doesn't work out at all. This is not the way you want to start your first day of the Unlimited Doozy Canoe Marathon. Plenty of drama in the women's batch as they go through the rapid below the witness weir. It's a bit like dodging cars here, but they do seem to be getting away with it. Immediately after that, the first big slog of the Campbell's Farm Portage. Thick mist still blanketing the hills on the outskirts of the city as the leading main contenders come jogging up out of the path cut after the paddlers have gone through the cane fields at the top and it's Lance Kime. Now there's a turn up for the books. Young Lance Kime, who a lot of people in the know have been tipping for a surprise at this year's race, is leading them and he's managed to run most of the way up this really, really tough hill. Hank McGregor with his ankle and his calf still strapped to Lani and Bunch were famous for his running and they're all having to play second fiddle to Kime. Cam Skuman, one of the former world champions in this bunch emerging out of the mist, also pushing hard to make sure that he can stay in contact with the people who are setting a blisteringly hot pace. Talk already of a possible record being broken, even though the river isn't that full. Now, who else is in that bunch? The two Czech paddlers, Jakub Adam and Michael Odvarko, still figuring very prominently in the top 20 at this stage. Their four months of training and conditioning here certainly paying dividends, but this is not their natural game, running with a boat over the hills. And here's Anstott, one of the icons of the game. Let's have a look at the top contenders now. These are the paddlers you need to look seriously at. He's won three times and for good reason. Andy Burkett in pole position for this year's race. And Stott, one of the icons, a multiple winner here. And a man who's been trying hard to keep pace with his work commitments. Another world champion and the man who partnered and Stott to that gold at the world champs, Cam Skuman, in good form at the moment. Hank McGregor has won the K1 and K2 title here. Still hungry. And then look at Len Jenkins, 2001 winner and a man who's in great form this year. Tulani Mbanjua, K2 winner, would dearly love to add a K1 scalp to that. Down the hill towards the end of the Campbell's Farm portage, the first of the two really long key portages on day one, and you can see four paddlers together. Now decisions, decisions. Some of them opting to head back to the river and head down towards Teguan Rapid. Others going straight over into the orchard and the hole in the wall portage. Now this is a roll of the dice, gambles, gambles. The paddlers will have worked it out and rehearsed it, hopefully at exactly the same water levels. There's Ant Stott leading the paddlers down into Teguan Rapid, while the others go charging through into the fruit orchards. Andy Burkett with Tulani and Banjma right on his tail. Now they're going to be trying to put the hammer down, make sure that the paddlers who've opted for the alternatives are not going to gain any advantage. The doozy's still flowing at a decent level now. Sponello Zondi going really nicely. A lot of people who've been watching him train and run in particular have said, watch this man, he could cause a real upset in 2013. After the Campbell's Farm Portage, a short paddle to the takeout, and then heading up Guinea Fowl, which leads into the notorious Devil's Cauldron. So this is a short stretch for the paddlers, and they can afford to use this opportunity to really stretch their arms and make sure that that kayak is going at full speed. Now, the Guinea Fowl Portage. This is one of the legends of the race. It's roughly the same sort of distance at Campbell's Farm, but it's steep. It's one of the steepest of the race, and there are three boats locked together as they go charging up the steep incline. There's a very welcome seconding table, and as they get near the top, it's Bonello Zondi, who's certainly showing his hand in a strong way early on. Lance Kime is not relaxing his early advantage on the race, and as they now drop into what is known in legendary terms as Devil's Cauldron. The mist is starting to burn off, the mercury is starting to rise as Hank McGregor gets it wrong. The nose of his boat pegs a tree. A little bit of frustration from Hank. This is the sort of thing that the paddlers try to rehearse to make sure that it doesn't happen on race day. But he's down into drag line. And as they get to the top of the hill, a quick look over his shoulder. And it is a surprise because Bonello Zondi is leading the pack as they get to the top and the start of the descent down Jeff's Road. 
three paddlers tightly grouped behind him, but nobody would have guessed that Zondi was going to be the race leader at this key stage of the race. It's a steep descent, and it looks like Lance Kime is carrying his boat. That's a slower option. But as they come down to the put-in at the end of Jeff's Road, there are four paddlers basically side by side. The pace still being set by Sponello Zondi. Lance Kime is right with him in that mix as well. Andy Burkett is also not going to let them get away. And Tulani Mbanjua is also not going to relax his grip on it. The three get on. Mbanjua is gone. Mbanjua has gone. He's dropped off that group now as they've got to the put-in at Jeff's Road. There he is. He's out of his boat. He would look like he was fiddling with the pump mechanism in his boat. And while he was trying to do that, he's been tipped out. Now, this is crucial. This is really going to dent his chances of being right up at the front of the race because they're roughly past the halfway mark. Now, the paddlers sense there's an opportunity. Blood in the water, if you'll have it. And they take off downriver. Great opportunity for seconds and spectators to get a sight of what is going on. And it is Andy Burkett leading with Sbonello Zondi. Sbonello now taking the advantage as they head further downriver and into the entrances of the rapids that ultimately lead towards Mission. Andy Burkett now paddling side by side with his team best for kayak center teammate Lance Keim. And a real buzz in the valley here. And Hank McGregor realizing that he's dropping off the pace and he's going to have to do it. More importantly, he's going to have to do it on his own. Oh, oh, nobody really there to help him. Len Jenkins from Team Shackleton jumping into the water as well. He will be disappointed with how far off the pace he is at this stage as they go under the bridge and in towards the entrances of Mission Rapid. This is the lower reaches of Mission Rapid and it is still Sponello Zondi who's leading the race. Carefully rehearsed lines, bounces through that nasty little stopper. You don't want to get caught on the rocks on either side. Andy Burkett comes tantalizingly close to that left-hand rock, but it's Burkett in two and Sponello Zondi in one. Three belongs at this stage to Lance Kime. A brilliant start to this race. He first showed his hand at the Hunter Fish earlier in the year and showed that he's ready to bark with the big dogs. And here comes Tulani Mbanjwa trying to make up ground lost by that silly swim just after the put in at Jeff's Road. Five at this stage belongs to Hank McGregor. He too will be disappointed that he's this far off the pace, but he makes no mistakes as they go through Mission Rapid. Then a key decision as the route uh, heads into the latter stages of day one, into the decision to walk and run over the cabbage tree portage or to paddle around. For the elite runners, if you can run this section hard, and by this stage it is hot and it's up a very hard tar road, you can make a minute or two. Great running here from a man who's feared worldwide for running with the boat, Tulani Mbanjwa. Grant Van Avalt, former world marathon champion in his age group, who's seconding Hank McGregor. The paddlers crest the hill and there's a buzz going around this race because Zondi is leading and there is a huge gap emerging now as we look at the splits in the women's race because Robin Keim has gone to the front early on and has simply put her foot down and the gap between herself and Abby AD in shot here is getting bigger and bigger with every kilometer. AD now really digging deep as the temperature starts to get hot as they head down the other side of this portage towards the river, running hard with the drag line. And here's another surprise because Bianca Hall, she's an Epworth schoolgirl, 17-year-old Bianca Hall is factoring herself right into the overall ladies' podium. At the end of the portage now, relief because this is the end of the long slogs for the day. Robin Kime getting into the water as she heads down towards Mission Rapid, which is not very far around the corner. And Kaim comfortable that she suddenly has complete and utter control, a vice-like grip on the ladies' race. And the pressure has now suddenly been switched to her teammate, Abby AD, who is in catch-up mode, well and truly. Quick entry into the water, and they'll want to get into the flowing water before they get onto their splash covers. See options, and the paddlers will have rehearsed it. Slightly longer run, but a quicker put-in, and you get into the flowing water quicker. It certainly saves a couple of milliseconds. Paddlers stretching off down towards the, where the crowds gather for one of the landmark moments on the first day, Mission Rapid. And then after Mission Rapid, the pull down towards the finish at Doozy Bridge Weir. The temperatures now are nudging into the lower 30s. And bear in mind, this is for the front paddlers. The back markers are going to cop what is a very, very hot day in the Valley of a Thousand Hills. Robin Kahn slicing gingerly and very carefully through the rocks at the bottom of Mission Rapid. Quick buck on the nose of the boat and she's out of there with no problem at all. But she has a gap and a substantial gap as the seconds look at their stopwatches. Abby 80 gets through mission, no problem at all. But again, you can see that stroke rate picking up. She's in catch-up mode. Mission Rapid, one of the great spectator points on day one and it always pulls a big crowd. Lines are everything at mission. You get it slightly wrong and you're going to find yourself high and dry. More importantly, as long as you don't take a swim, you do lose time and there's frustration involved in not getting mission right as well. The final section of day one is a critical one because there's that portage at Cabbage Tree. 
to run over the cabbage tree. It's steep, it's on a very hot section of Tar Road. And the seconds are excited to see Spornello Zondi now in control. Spornello Zondi has dropped Andy Burkett, a man who expected to be in control of this race and running hard. Lance Kai still in the top three. You can see he's digging deep and breathing hard. Temperatures are high and with the humidity, Staying oxygenated is key at this stage, and Spornello Zondi, who is flying and with cheers ringing in his ear, is getting to the overnight stop. Leader at the end of day one. Nobody would have guessed this. Congratulations and well deserved from Andy Burkett. Where did it turn for you? Where did where did the where did you take the lead? Uh, where did I take the lead? I take the lead from the second Kinafal. I caught the guys on the hill and uh, I didn't panic. I just keep constant on my pace, and uh, this is how I managed to, to open the gap to the guys. Andy, second place, tell us about your day. Yeah, it was amazing day out there today, racing against Eric, Lance and Bungie. Um, amazing racing, um, especially because we were all together most of the way, so it was really tough out there. Eric pushing the pace quite a bit on the portages, breaking the record, um, which I set two years ago by 39 seconds, which is really amazing, and congrats to him. Um, I enjoyed myself out there so much. Close behind Eric, um, I'm lying second. I'm happy with that. Um, great day, and looking forward to tomorrow. And here are the numbers that count, unbelievable numbers, because the new record overall by 40 seconds for Bonello Zondi, Burkett, Kaim, and Banjua, McGregor, and then Jenkins, a distant sixth. Back to the river now, and we catch up with what is going on in the ladies' race. And a big smiles all the way around, as the injection of youth into this race has changed the complexion in the women's race. Slogging up cabbage tree. How are you feeling? So I'm very tired, but the end is near, so I'm glad it's coming soon. No matter how well you've run Cabbage Tree, the relief is palpable as you put back into the Doozy River for the short paddle down to the finish at Doozy Bridge. Robin Kime in complete and utter control of the ladies' race. Yeah, if you'd spoken to me a day ago, I would have told you that I'm definitely a little bit less fit than where I'd been in previous Doozies, but today has gone brilliantly well. It's gone better than any of the previous years. Um, I think it's uh, over the past year I've been really enjoying my running and throughout the whole year just I've just kept it up and I think without noticing I've put some extra strength into my legs so I think that's where I made the time today over the hills. Sure today was hard. Eh? I thought I'd done the right running but obviously not. I battled today and just didn't have the legs and so Bianca caught me so surprised from the back but yeah well done to her. So the conclusion of the women's race and what a fascinating turnout it's been. Robin Kime breaking the women's race record by three minutes. That's Abby Ulansky's old record that's gone out the window. Some incredible racing on the first day of the Unlimited Doozy for 2013. Just 20 seconds between Eric Zondi and the defending champion Andrew Burkett. Will that change on day two where the paddlers may well come into their own? Will Hank McGregor charge through the field? He's a long way down now. And in the ladies, Robin Kime has it all to lose. She's got a huge lead over Abby Aidy. Fantastic racing on a bakingly hot day in the valley here. Tomorrow, it's Doozy Bridge to Inanda Dam. No, and then they convinced my partner from last year to, to do it again and to phone me and convince me to do it. We had uh, so much fun last year that uh, now he knows what to expect so he can have more fun. I know about guinea fowl, I know about commercial, I know about the big swings that we potentially could have but we've got a good plan now, the rules are in place, the tactics are in place so we're looking forward to it. Make sure that tonight he has a nice time, no incidents, shoot all the rapids. No, this is Dilfus Cauldron. Please don't embarrass me on TV. Uh, we haven't started climbing, have we? It's been good, thanks, but uh, it's getting hot now. Young guys can't get up there. Not, what chance have I got? After nine year layoff, so happy to be back. Yeah, well to Hillary. Um, happy Valentine's Day. 
No, 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 no. My Valentine's right here, my boat, eh? It's uh, not called Devil's Cauldron for nothing, eh? Right, this is what they call the Devil's Scrotum, sorry, um, cauldron. Nearly finished, thank goodness the runs are the killer. You can't be the one to slow down, Mr. O. So, we'll die on Saturday. By the sizzling sword of Zeus. Fine, thanks. Sit off to the water table. <laughs> That's a bit warm, eh? Other than that, it's pretty cool. Am I winning yet? How far am I behind the leaders? Busy day with my partner Dion, but uh, it was good. The, the portages were quite tough. So she guinea fowl at the end there. Red line was sort of coming up, but fantastic day on the water, and it's uh, good to have day one in the bag. Next moment we were over. I was like, what are we doing here? <laughs> and just downstream from that is one tree. In the middle. In the middle. And I can just see the boat is going for the tree. Much, much better. My mind could have never imagined such an incredible journey today. Lovely day, beautiful weather, stunning valley, yeah, the best way to spend a day. The Unlimited Doozy was proudly brought to you by The Unlimited. You're everything.